Tabernacle Baptist Church of Roanoke, Texas. Once again, we look forward to this opportunity to share the Word of God with each and every one of you. We, of course, welcome our church family, our regular media family, our visitors, and our new listeners. We trust and pray as we share this together today that it'll be enlightening, encouraging, and maybe so corrective. But we intend for the program to bring glory to God, lift up Christ, and speak to you who are unsaved that you might realize that you need to trust Jesus Christ as personal Savior. That you are in one of the most dangerous situations in all of life not to be reconciled to God. With all that's going on, the pandemic, the rise in crime, that day could overtake you sooner than you think. So it's very, very important. And believer, if we aim to do anything for the Lord, we need to do it today. But I want us to turn to Mark 16, 15. And the Bible said, He say, said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I think personally one of the greatest battles in modern time we have been thrust into and that is a battle for the souls of men and women. You see, this spiritual battle is a situation that because of the departure from the faith and because of the familiarity with sin and disobedience, Satan is blinding more people, I believe personally, than any time in modern time. In fact, this has come to pass and it's evident of that because in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 through 4, we find the present society that is in force today. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, and traitor, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of God. Father, once again we come before the throne of grace, realizing the need of the hour is to reach every person we possibly can with the gospel. Because the day grows short when there'll be no opportunity or it will even be limited, if it is, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because in recent years, we, as a nation, have grown further away from the way of God and have become pleasure-orientated 
and sin accepting that our hearts have become a stone and our minds have been captured by darkness. Therefore, we need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We need more soul winners. We need more people that will share the gospel in this time of crises. They will give more people an opportunity to hear and by the conviction of the Holy Spirit, believe and accept Jesus Christ as personal Savior. Bless now the message and we'll give you the glory for it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, the Bible tells us very plainly in Acts chapter 1 in verse 8 that every believer is to be a witness. Every believer. Not just some to be those who witness. Everybody that has been saved has a witness of how God has brought about their conviction and their need of salvation. You do not have to be a preacher, a missionary, an evangelist. You do not have to have a seminary degree. All you need to be a witness is to have had an experience with Jesus Christ. Once you have truly been born again, I have yet to see or hear personally and by no means to think that I've been able to hear or see everything, but in my ministry, when a person has really been born again, the first thing that comes out of their mouth, I want to tell my family. I want to tell my wife. I want to tell my husband. I want to tell my friends. I can remember like it was just yesterday. The day that God saved me, I couldn't hardly wait to leave church to go home and tell my mom and dad, Jesus saved me. Jesus found me. And I want him to find you. It was my very first impulse. And listen to me. You see, Jesus told us very plainly the importance of it. We find in John chapter 9 and verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh. When no man can work. And I'm going to tell you ladies and gentlemen. We've been caught. In the situation we're in. Because we did not. Obey the great commission. That God gave the individual. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. And he gave to the church commission. In Matthew chapter 28. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, it is the personal commission by God because after that the Holy Spirit has come upon us and he does that in the new birth. Then we are commissioned. Sometimes my heart breaks when somebody will say, well, I'm not the, uh, theology uh, efficient. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. All you need to do is to share the experience that God gave you concerning your salvation, how you heard the word of God. And let me even give you some help. As a new believer, until you learn, until you can commit to memory, get you a piece of paper and write down the story of salvation. And there's nothing wrong. Or get you a Bible 
and color code it, put you a paper clip or something to where to start and read it. Take that piece of paper and put it in front of your Bible. Give them the steps and tell them, I heard the word of God. Somebody invited me. Somebody shared with me how that Jesus died on the cross. I listened and the Holy Spirit touched my heart. And all I know is God convicted me and I repented of my sins and trusted Jesus. Now you think as a 14 year old boy, I knew everything about salvation? No, sir. But I do know this, that the Lord touched my heart and I was convicted that if I would ask him to forgive me and save me, he would, and he did. And ladies and gentlemen, if you've had experience with Jesus Christ, don't you remember even the demoniac of the Gadarenes? He wanted to stay with Jesus, but Jesus said, look, look listen, 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 listen to me now. He said, go home to your family and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. Oh, listen to me. Stop making excuses. If you've had an experience with Jesus Christ, you are a witness. You are a witness of the grace of God. Oh, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. And Jesus wants everyone to hear the good news of salvation. Look again in our text, Mark chapter 16, 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world. Underline the word ye, that's personal. Every believer, every believer, not just some, I'm under no more responsibility to witness for Christ as a preacher than you are for somebody that's sitting in a pew or out here in everyday life. I'm under no greater responsibility. I may have a greater opportunity, but listen to me, who much is given, much is required. Oh, listen to me, friend. Listen to me. And preach the gospel to every creature. In a recent survey, it was asked, what is the most effective way to reach people today? And the survey asked over 10,000 people this question. What was responsible for your coming to Christ and to your church? There were eight answers. Number one, I had a special need, 3%. Number two, I just walked into church, 3%. I like the preacher, 6%. I plan to visit there just one time, 1%. I like the Bible classes, 5%. Number six, I attended a gospel meeting, a half a percent, a half. Number seven, I like the programs, 3%. Now I want you to listen very carefully to number eight. Listen to me. A friend or relative invited me. Take an educated guess of what percentage out of 10,000 people the percentage was. 79%. You see, personal evangelization is the means by which God reaches people. Think about it. Do you know why the church hasn't grown spiritually over the past few years? You know how? Because God's people have not witnessed. Thinking that the full duty was all I needed to do was come to church, be faithful to church, give my tithes and offerings, and I had fulfilled my obligation and privilege. 
Now, you may not agree with me. I don't even know that preachers do. But I think God pushed us out of the church because we wouldn't do what we were supposed to. I think the Lord said, if I have to take you out of the house, I will to get you to do something. We have become pew setters. We have become pew setters. We were willing to sit in the pews, but we were not willing to go. And notice what the Bible said. Go ye all into all the world. Go. God nowhere in his Bible said, Sinner, come on in. Come on in. In fact, listen to me. Just if memory doesn't play absence on me, the only time I find... Uh, specifically was where the publican slipped in the back door and got saved. Listen, most of the people that were saved were saved during the church service until the Lord shut the church up in the book of Acts and sent them out. Then in two years, they reach the whole known world. Oh, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible tells us very plainly, we need to learn from this survey as well as from the Word of God. People, not programs, reach people. Look at Luke chapter 14 and verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, singular, he didn't say servants, denoting every believer. Do you know even if you're homebound, you could still be a witness? What about the service person that comes by or he who's delivering groceries or the postman who you get mail delivery? Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. There are opportunities the problem is we're not taking them look what he said and the Lord said unto the servant go out once again I stand by the conviction I have and it's just mine it doesn't make me smarter than anybody else it doesn't make anybody else wrong that don't but I personally feel that the Lord shut the door to his house to get us out to witness to the public like we should have because it says go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. You see, it's God's will for a church to be filled. Every pew in our church given the right time frame we are limited because of the pandemic but every pew in a church ought to be filled that's what the bible said if god's people were going out inviting you won't always get all those that you ask but you'll get a lot of those that you asked that didn't come because you asked them god will honor it I have visited not one single person would come. But then when God brought my attention to it, I had that many or more people come that nobody supposedly had invited. God won't owe you nothing. He won't owe you nothing. Look at it. Look at it. And then David confirms it even in the Old Testament. Look at Psalms 126, verse 5 and 6. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. If you have a compassion, a heartbreaking compassion for the lost condition of your family, your friends, your acquaintances, if our heart was really, 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 really broken when we realize what the fate is of every single unbeliever, and don't be fooled, we're not exempt in our families. Do not be deceived to think everybody in your genealogy knows Christ as Savior. 
Don't take it for granted that every friend you may have knows Jesus Christ and the free pardon of sin. And how can you know unless you ask? I still believe we could have a revival if families would just ask families and friends would just ask friends. Listen to me. Look at verse 6 though. Here it comes again. Here it comes again. The Holy Spirit is going to keep on reminding us. Look at it. He that goeth forth. And may I pause for just a moment. Now be honest. Nobody can see you. I can't see you. God sees you. When's the last time you really got heartbroken over a family member or a friend or maybe a person you're working with? How long has it been? And also, when was the last time you invited some, oh, well, they live too far, they wouldn't come. How do you know? You're, you're not God. You're not God. This just means nothing to people that God touches their heart. Listen to me. Listen to me. That's a flimsy excuse to be disobedient. Look what it says. He that goeth forth weepeth bearing precious seed. That's the message. That's the gospel. Jesus Christ. Death. Burial and resurrection. Paul said, I delivered unto you first of all, according to the scriptures. How that Christ died, was buried, and rose the third day. That's the message that God left you as a believer to share. Pause for a moment. You that are saved, I want to talk to you just a moment. Where would you be? If somebody hadn't have went, where would you be if somebody hadn't have told you? Where would you be if somebody hadn't invited you? Where would you be if somebody hadn't brought you? You'd be lost and on the road to hell. Because how shall they hear without somebody telling them? Look at it. Notice shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Here's what God needs. Here's what Jesus wants. Like Jesus, he's looking for his children who are concerned for the lost. Look at Matthew 9, 36 through 38. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. Oh, when the Lord Jesus looked. And he knew how many were unsaved. How many had no shepherd. He was moved with compassion because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then he said, Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. You see, there was no need for there being no unsaved people. The fields are white unto harvest, especially today, ladies and gentlemen. There's more spiritual ignorance in this land than at any time in its history absolutely ignorant of what God says about sin and judgment and salvation. Oh, have mercy. Pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Paul shares with us what a believer ought to have in a broken heart. Romans 9, 1 through 3. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also beareth me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness, continual sorrow for my heart. For I could wish that myself were cursed for Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Paul said, I wished I could go to hell for all of them. He couldn't. Oh, when's the last time your heart was broke? When was the last time 
that in your spirit you were grieved for somebody that you know personally is not saved or does not have the evidence of salvation and if they don't have the actions of salvation then evangelize them you can't get them saved twice but you can lose them once listen to me we need people to understand the midnight hour is growing jesus said i must work those works remember what he said very plainly and it applies to us very carefully oh listen to me ladies and gentlemen he said in John chapter 9 and verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. And we've approached that, ladies and gentlemen, very closely. We're close to that midnight hour. We're close to when the trumpet could sound and the dead in Christ would rise. We that alive remain would be called out. So should we ever be with the Lord. Then those that were not reached, rejected. The Bible said they would be given a strong delusion that they might believe a lie, that they might be damned because they obeyed not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me. People are dying around us. Family and friends and acquaintances and pure strangers. And let me say to you, there's no greater need that you'll have as an individual if and when God chooses to take somebody you love. The only comfort you'll have in that time is to have known that they made a profession and accepted Jesus Christ as personal Savior. And to be absent from the body will be to be present with the Lord. I remember in the times that I was serving as chaplain, almost without fail, where there was a tragedy or when there was a, a funeral to be asked. Chaplain, was there any evidence that they had ever accepted Christ as personal Savior? Do you know? Did you have personal contact with them? And you know what a sadness upon a sadness was be? I'm sorry. I don't have that information. I had no personal contact with them even though I'm conducting the service. On the other hand, you could tell them, yes, we'd had conversations and so-and-so had assured his or her salvation. And the assurance is based upon what they say, I can tell you that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Father, bless the message. Help us, help us to grieve now instead of when it's too late. Help us to be compassionate now instead of when it's too late. Help us to know the condition of our families and our friends and our neighbors, whosoever that we come in contact with. To ask them, to ask them, do you know Jesus in the free pardon of sin? Not in condemnation, not in judgment, but out of compassion. Not to bring about shame upon them, but to show them concern that they might come to Christ. Bless now and we'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.